All right, everyone, it's 2.30, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone, to my little presentation about uh, the distinction between composition or structured documents in FIRE and questionnaires. Um, my name is Simone Heckmann. I'm chair of the technical committee for FIRE at HR7 Germany. And if you were at Dev Days last year in Amsterdam, you maybe heard me ranting about some of the specifications that we have in Germany, which are mostly document-based, using document bundles, and the issues that we have with this approach, and why I was of the opinion that we should have used questionnaires to sa save us some of the pain that we are currently experiencing. And ever since I did that, I was thinking about what kind of guidance would I give people who were starting with new projects, with new specifications, and they asked me whether they should use structured documents or questionnaires. And so I tried to come up with some criteria that should help figuring out which one is best for you. Just to catch everyone up about what it is actually is that we are talking about, let me give you a quick recap about structured documents and questionnaires in FIRE. They both serve pretty much the same purpose, and that is the communication of structured information in the shape and form of a document. With a structured document approach, we usually start by creating a composition resource. This composition contains all the document metadata, like what kind of document is this, who's the author of that document, at what time was this document created, and it also structures the document into different sections. And each of these sections may contain references to other FIRE resources that make up the structured contents of this document. And once we are finished with the creation, with the composition of our structured document, we take all the resources that we selected, that we want to have as part of our document, and put it all into a bundle. And this bundle is the structured document. It's a, the resource that we can exchange using different kinds of protocols to send this document to a recipient. So for example, here we have like a discharge letter that would have a fixed number of sections, like uh, medical history or diagnosis, uh, medications. And in these sections, you would reference the uh, fire resources that contain the pertinent information for this particular patient and this particular encounter. With the questionnaire approach, we are digging a little bit deeper. We are not now thinking in objects that we aggregate uh, to represent a document, but we are more kind of thinking on a field level. Like we define the different items of information that we want to have in our questionnaire. And for example, here we have a tiny little questionnaire with three questions. First question is we want to know the patient's name. Second question, we want to know how the patient is doing. Uh, we are giving a few options that you can choose from. And then we have a third question where we are kind of asking again what the issue is with the patient. But we only want to ask that question if the patient answers that he is not doing well. In all other cases, we are just fine with the patient answering the first two questions. And in this case, the information that we capture is contained in questionnaire response resources. So for one questionnaire, we might have multiple questionnaire responses that are basically answering the same questions for multiple different patients. And when we communicate our information, only the questionnaire response is being sent and exchanged between systems. The questionnaire response is pretty much like a set of keys and values, where the key is the ID of the item that you defined in your questionnaire, 
and the value is the answer that has been given. So it's a very compact format. You could actually represent the same information that we had in this structure documents where you have, I haven't even counted, but let's say at least 12 resources wrapped in a bundle. You could have the same information in just one resource, in just one questionnaire response. So it's really difficult to draw a straight line and to say, this is when you use a structured document, this is when you use a questionnaire. All of these criteria are pretty soft criteria. But I think it's giving you a general idea on, or a tendency on which a paradigm would be preferable for a specific use case. The first criteria is how exact is the agreement between sender and receiver about the structure of the data? If it's just a rough structure, like for example, if your discharge letter is supposed to have multiple sections, but you're not making really a lot of assumptions or constraints about the contents of each of these sections, then you're more likely to be in the structured document realm. Whereas when your agreements really go down to each to field level and make assumptions about the values that are allowed or which fields are required and uh, really very precise agreements, you're probably better off using a questionnaire. The next criteria is the amount of free text that may be composed or maybe a part of your document. In a structured document, we are actually able to decide whether a section is structured and references other fire resources, or a section could also just contain narrative. So for example, in a discharge letter, we could have a couple of structured sections like lists of diagnosis and medications, but the patient's medical history might just be text. Also, recommendations for further treatments maybe don't really need to be structured. This could be, again, a section where the user can just enter free text. We can also have free text in a questionnaire, but usually it's not a whole part of the document that's free text, but it's one specific question that may be answered by entering text and not just choosing between different options. The next criteria is how, how much knowledge do you have about how the information that you communicate is going to be used. With a structured document, particularly with the discharge letter as an example, you're not really making a lot of assumption of what the person receiving that document is going to do with that information. You're just basically putting the information out there for other people to consume it and to to reuse this particular information. With a questionnaire, you're more, probably more likely to have a very particularly, particular use case in mind. It's probably some kind of automated process that you are feeding information into. Um, maybe um, it's a statistic that you provide information for. Or maybe it's a, a registry that you are entering information into. So with a questionnaire, most of the time, we have a very precise idea of how this data is going to be used that we provide. Next up, it's just a question of volume. With a structured document, there's a tendency for these documents to be quite comprehensive, to tell a long story about a patient's encounter and all the things that happened during that encounter, whereas a questionnaire is mostly more concise and usually maybe just one, two pages long, whereas a document can easily have multiple pages. Um, again, that's a very soft criteria, but it, it's, it's kind of a tendency that should help uh, to make that decision. What's also typical for structured documents, it's that you usually have open lists. Like, for example, the diagnosis section in a discharge letter would ask you to, to list 
all of the diagnoses for a particular patient. It's not making any assumption about what these diagnoses are or what, which diagnosis to include or exclude. With a questionnaire, it's more likely the case that you only care about a specific set of diagnoses and you don't actually ask the user to list the diagnosis, but instead you're asking whether a patient has particular diagnoses. For example, in a questionnaire, you would probably have a set of questions that are like, is the patient diabetic? Yes, no, don't know. Is, does the patient have a history of heart problems? Yes, no, don't know. Is the patient pregnant? Yes, no, don't know. So you would only ask or only uh, query for the data that is pertinent to your particular use case. And most of the time you're not asking for any details. You don't want to know the date of the diagnosis or the severity or the laterality. Uh, instead, you just want to know whether a particular situation or diagnosis exists. Um, next up, with a structured document, we normally make the assumption that the information that goes into the structured document, into that bundle, already exists in, this, in the system where the document is produced. With a questionnaire, the default assumption is that all of the data needs to be entered by a user. Again, there's a grayscale there because we can use auto pre-population to enter existing data into uh, a questionnaire. But there is no assumption about what a system should do when it uh, composes a document, but there is missing data. Let's say you have to create a discharge letter that asks for a section containing particular mandatory information that does not exist in your system. What do you do? Um, so this is totally up to the system to solve that issue, to maybe create a new UI where, where the user can enter the missing information or to add a new interface where it can collect the missing information. But the specification of the document doesn't make any assumption about how you should handle this particular situation. Whereas with a questionnaire, it's obvious. If the information doesn't exist, then whoever populates the questionnaire has to manually enter the missing data. The primary purpose of a document usually is to inform another person of a particular history of a patient or to give information to a person. If the document or if the information was meant for an automated process, we wouldn't have to take the extra steps of adding sections and titles and metadata to our document. We would just create a message bundle or a collection bundle and just throw the information to the receiving and processing system. We wouldn't have to create sections because systems don't care about sections and, and uh, headings in a document. They just need data. So whenever we go through the extra effort of creating a structured document, we're kind of assuming that there's a human on the other end of the line that wants to be presented, wants the data to be presented in a specific way, in a specific uh, sequence and structure. So the primary purpose of a document is to inform another human. And the fact that we also have machine processable structured information as part of that content is kind of a bonus on top. With a questionnaire, it's the other way around. The questionnaire most of the time is used to feed automated processes, to collect the data very specific for one particular process. And the bonus on top is that it's quite easy to create something human readable from a populated questionnaire. Because you're basically just uh, adding you know, um, question and answer given, and then you can create something that a human can read. So it might sound to you that questionnaires, when you use pre-population to gather information, existing information from a system into a questionnaire, 
And then you send it to someone who might then extract the information into fire resources to process them. It might sound like this is just the same as structured documents, but with extra steps. Like, wouldn't it be easier to take the data that we have in the first place, put it in a bundle, and then just you know, unpack the bundle on the, on the other side? However, what if the required information is not available in your creating system? Again, you need to change the system in order to capture the missing information. Um, also, quite often it happens that when you report out information, that there are data protection constraints. You cannot just simply use the, inf the resources you already have in your system and just put them in a bundle and send them out because there may be too much information in there. These resources may contain information you're not allowed to send in this particular case. Uh, context. So you might have to clean up your existing resources before you can use them. With a questionnaire, we don't have that problem because a questionnaire response only contains the information that was actually asked. So when we use, for example, a patient resource from the sending system to populate a questionnaire, we will only use the particular fields that are actually associated with a question in a questionnaire. So the sending system doesn't have to pay attention to the restriction. It doesn't have to recreate another version of that patient resource that only contains specific information. The questionnaire will take care of filtering and sanitizing the information. And finally, the most important aspect on why I would recommend to prefer questionnaires over structured documents is the time it takes to deploy them. If you are in a situation where you need data fast and your requirements change on a high frequency, Think about what it would mean to do that with structured documents. When you send out a structured document specification and systems have to implement that, they will have to look at your spec and make an analysis and figure out how many of the resources we need to populate that document do we already have? What's missing? How do we get the information that's missing? Do we need to add a new UI to our system where people can enter that information? Do we need to implement a new interface to fetch that information? Do we need to sanitize the information that we already have because it may contain more information that a particular document requires? And then all of this needs to be implemented, needs to be rolled out, needs to be tested, and then we can start delivering data. With questionnaires, it looks a little bit different because if once a system has learned to render and pre-populate questionnaires, it can do it for any questionnaire. So if you provide them with a new questionnaire, all they have to do is to kind of load that new questionnaire. It's just a change of configuration. It's not a change of code or of implementation. So if you imagine you had a national infrastructure where systems could quickly discover new questionnaires or changed questionnaires, the time to deploy them would be instantly. Because all they would have to do is to load this new questionnaire configuration pre-populate it with, with whatever information they already have and whatever is missing is manually entered by the user when they fill out the questionnaire. And your data could be delivered instantly. That, however, is assuming that you are in, in, in a scenario where all the systems are capable of rendering questionnaires. And that is quite a, a big ask because rendering questionnaire is not simple pre-populating questionnaire is even harder. The good news, however, is not all systems actually have to learn to do that. Instead, you could just have used the Smart on Fire framework to enable any system out there to connect with an app that is able to render questionnaires and that can deal with the pre-population of these questionnaires. So I think this is the biggest uh, criteria 
that is important is how quickly do you need to deploy? How quickly do your requirements change or the structure of your document change? And how much time is acceptable until uh, the systems out there can deliver data in the format that you require? If you have any questions about questionnaires um, or about this topic, you can find me on Sulip. You can send me direct messages on Sulip. Or you can contact the community. I linked um, the Sulip stream where the questionnaire community is uh, uh, discussing. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Do we have a Q&A right now or at the end of the whole session? All right, OK. Does anyone have a question? Lloyd. You didn't really talk about the utility of the questionnaire response for downstream use. And that, to me, is the biggest difference between composition and questionnaire response. Questionnaire response is great for the initial consumer who knows exactly what's in it and what it's for, but it's completely useless for everybody downstream. Nobody else is going to have a clue what's in it or what it means. Whereas yes. composition, everybody downstream uh, can use the content, can render the content, can interpret the discrete data. Yeah. And that that's, that's the p only piece that makes me a bit nervous about the recommendation of, of questionnaire responses, understanding the ramifications of that. You can manage that if you've got extraction. Yeah. Um, but you... I, I'm not sure if I agree with the notion that discrete fire resources are easier to render than questionnaires, because that kind of assumes that you are really diligent with adding narratives to your resources, or you are under the assumption that all systems know how to render generic fire resources, whereas rendering a questionnaire is fairly simple. You can use a very generic approach to render any questionnaire, assuming you have access, uh, any questionnaire response, assuming you have access to the underlying questionnaire. But you're absolutely right about the downstream consumption, and I think due to lack of time in this session, I really didn't touch on the uh, extraction topic. I think when I think about questionnaires in my head, I always think about the SDC spec and all the extra uh, features that are in the structured uh, data capture specification that allow you not only to pre-populate your questionnaire from existing data, but to also extract data from your questionnaire responses into fire resources that you can then use for downstream pro processing. And that's pretty much why I uh, th sometimes think about questionnaires as being structured documents with extra steps. Because again, you start with fire resources, but then you pre-populate them to a questionnaire only to extract them on the other side and end up with resources again, which kind of seems complicated. But again, I see a lot of advantages in this approach. First of all, being the generic approach and the selection of data, the sanitation of data, so you can com comply with data protection, um, and the ability to quickly capture any missing information without having to change your system or having to change your code. Any more questions? Uh, so do you see, so you, you talked about, you know, capturing missing data, but I guess if, if there are in situations where there isn't missing data or you don't have to worry about that, um, could there be, do you envision like a situation where there might not be a user involved? You just sort of generate questionnaire responses for, a, you know, say 100 patients and then send, send them off? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of depends. Um, technically, I would absolutely agree that you could automatically pre-populate a questionnaire, validate it, find that it's valid and complete, and just send it without ever interacting with any user. You could absolutely do that. 
However, this questionnaire that automatically pre-populates itself contains a lot of logic because pre-population means you're running a fire query with appropriate criteria to find exactly the resource that you need to pre-populate. Then you're running a fire path expression on top to find the one element that contains the answer to your question and you're actually putting a lot of trust into the person that created the questionnaire and added the uh, annotations for pre-population to really get it right, to find the right uh, resource and to have an appropriate fire path expression that deals with repeatable data, like selects the appropriate instance that is best to, to populate the questionnaire. So I think it's probably a good idea to have a user, you know, just look at the data and say, yeah, that's okay. That's the appropriate information, that's the, the latest information, and the prefetch and pre-population was adequate and, and got the right information. But I think there's probably scenarios where questionnaires are so well tested and the data is so has such a good quality that you can actually be sure that the pre-population always works. But I'm not sure how realistic <laughs> that expectation would be. But I think in a, in a well-controlled scenario, you could probably easily do that. Yeah. Any more questions? No? And who's next in this session? <laughs> Thank you.